In this video, we're going to look at a worded problem. 60% of a large population of trees are infected with a disease. A random sample of 20 trees are selected. Find the probability that the sample contains, firstly, more than 16 infected trees, then part B, at most 9 infected trees, and then C, exactly 10 infected trees. Okay? So, let's look at this first bit. Let's set the problem out as a binomial distribution problem because ultimately the trees are either infected with the disease or they're not. Okay, so we have x is binomially distributed with n, the number in the sample, so 20, and a probability of success, which in this case we will take to mean that the tree is infected, okay, uh, is 60%, so 0.6 as the probability. So if we want to find the probability of more than 16 being infected, we want the probability of x being greater than 16. Okay. Now I can't work that out straight from the tables. I've got to use less than or equals to. Now if I want greater than 16, that's 17 and above. Okay. So, what I can do is I can say, well, I can think of it as, if I want 17 and above, I don't want 16 and below. So I can do one take away the probability of x being less than or equal to 16. So I just need to find that one in the tables. So that's one take away. So we look up our tables in the formula booklet. Uh, 0.6 is the probability, with n is 20, and we go down to 16, and that's 0 0.9840. So 0 0.9840. And so the final probability that we're looking for is 0 0.0160. Okay? And that's what we wanted for that problem. If we want at most nine infected trees, then I want up to nine, but no more. So x has to be less than or equal to nine. OK? So this one I can look directly up at the tables because it's already a less than or equals to problem. So n is 20 again, 0.6. Then we go to 9, and that's 0.1275. Now, the final question here is exactly 10 infected trees. Now, I'm going to show you two ways to do this. Now, you could either do the tables approach. So, exactly 10 is the same as me looking at the probability of x being less than or equal to 10. So that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And I don't want all of those. I just want that one on the end. So I take away 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So probability of x being less than or equal to 9. So you can work out exact probabilities from the tables. So 0.6, and we're going to 10, so that's 0.2447. And I want to take away 9, which was 0.1275, the answer that I got there. OK, so I could do this on the board. I'm going to use a calculator. A little cheat. So 0.2447, take away 0.1275, and we get 0.1172. Okay? Now that's the first way of doing it. So you can use the tables to get an answer that way. Or, of course, you can use the formula. So the probability of x being equal to 10 is, well, out of the 20, I want 10, so 10, 20 NCR 10, times by the probability of success, which is 0.6, and I want that to happen 10 times, and 
multiply that by the probability of failure, which is 0.4, and I want that to happen also 10 times. So if we do this on the calculator, 20 NCR 10, and then multiply that by 0.6 to the power of 10, and then multiply that by 0.4 to the power of 10, and we get 0.11714155505. So, <clears throat> now as you can see, these aren't exactly the same. Okay, they're the same to three decimal places, but uh, either are fine as your answer here. Okay, I know that to four decimal places, this doesn't round to that. It actually rounds to 0 0.1171. That's because of these both being rounded in the tables. Okay, and that's why there's this, um, this slight difference between the two. But it doesn't matter which one you write down, as long as you've shown you're working in order to get there, so that you can identify, so that the examiner can identify exactly how you got to your answer.